everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. In today's video, we will be doing another video in my fan theory series where I take a popular fan theory that hasn't gotten a conclusive answer and I break down the evidence to support the theory. I'll try and poke some holes in a theory and then I'll give my opinion on whether or not I think it's plausible. Let me go ahead and thank audible.com for sponsoring what I'm doing here on the channel. They offer thousands of audiobooks and a subscription service that I use every day. I'm a huge fan of the Wheel of Time audiobooks and I know you'd love them too. If you don't have them already or you don't have an Audible account, make sure to take advantage of the offer that they're giving to my viewers. You can have a free audiobook just by going to www.audibletrial.com dot com forward slash nabless and signing up for a one month free trial. You don't have to keep the service and even if you cancel it you still get to keep your audiobook so it's a no risk arrangement and you get to help the channel at the same time. Thank you so much to the hundreds of you that have now taken advantage and received your audiobook. I know many of you out there use the service regularly just like I do. So let's go ahead and throw up a spoiler warning for the video. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of red meaning it will have major spoilers all the way through the final book of the series so if you haven't read all of them, watch at your own risk. The theory that we're going to take a look at today was made by a blogger that goes by the name of Great Lord of the Dark. How appropriate. And this was back on the Theoryland site back in 2012, right before the release of A Memory of Light. His theory is, is that the boar to the Dark One's prison was drilled and exists in Teleron Riod, or the world of dreams. So before we can have a discussion about the theory, let's talk a little about the nature of the Wheel of Time universe, and how the world of the Wheel of Time is structured so that we can have a context for understanding the details of the theory. The universe of the Wheel of Time and the things that happen in it are a part of the pattern that is woven by the Wheel of Time, which is not a physical wheel, but a descriptive example of how time and reality create the happenings of the world. Life forms and souls are threads in this reality and are woven together as time passes. Each time that a decision is made in the world though, a new reality is formed, essentially creating an infinite number of possible realities. These other realities are the places that the portal stones access. They are portals to alternate realities within the greater universe. Each of the alternate realities though are connected to the main reality by the world of dreams, or Teleron Riod. The world of dreams, also referred to as the unseen world, is a reflection of reality, although not a permanent reflection. Geographical formations like mountains and forests exist in the world of dreams, but buildings and other objects only exist if they have existed long enough in the real world to create an impression on the world of dreams. Things like letters, food, doors, and other objects may flicker in and out of existence or move around a room as a reflection of what is happening in the real world. There is also a place between the world of dreams and reality called the in-between place, where the minds and souls of everyone in the world that are asleep can be accessed. This in-between place resembles an infinite black nothingness with tiny blips of light that appear to be stars from a distance but in reality are the minds of sleeping people. Within the world of dreams, those that can access it, whether they be channelers of the one power that can open gateways, dream walkers who are born with the ability to enter the world of dreams, or wolf brothers that have a similar ability to dreamwalkers, can all change or alter reality around them in the world of dreams just by force of will. For instance, a dreamwalker can change their clothing or their appearance to whatever they desire. They can heal wounds they received if they have sufficient will. They can teleport or create objects out of the air. Injuries or deaths sustained in the world of dreams will kill or affect the person in the waking world as well so it's a very dangerous place. Time also passes very differently inside the world of dreams. It essentially moves much slower while in the dream. An hour in the world of dreams can be an entire night in the waking world. The world of dreams is essentially a third eternal constant to the creator and the dark one, a place where reality is reflected and very malleable. So now that we have a contextual basis, let me explain the details of the theory. The theory states that the bore into the dark one's prison was drilled in the world of dreams and that it still exists there prior to Rand sealing it in the last battle. There are some interesting implications to this as well. For instance, the boar being inside of the world of dreams implies that Sheogul is a part of the world of dreams and possibly the rest of the blight itself. This also implies that the effect the Dark One has on the world is filtered through the world of dreams as well. So, how does the author of the theory support it? Well, for one, it is stated over and over again in the story that the Pit of Doom and Sheogul are no closer to the boar than anywhere else in the world, 
but that is where the thinness in the pattern is allowed to be sensed. How else would this make sense if not that the boar was in the world of dreams and that the barrier to the world of dreams in the waking world was thinner near Sheogul and that's why it could be sensed. Another reason given to support the theory is that Mieran Arenale, later known as Lanfear, was one of the two scientists to drill the hole into the Dark One's prison. She professed her strength and mastery of the world of dreams over and over, so it seems like it would make sense that her research would have taken place in the world of dreams, hence why the boar would be drilled there. The author also suggests that because the boar was drilled within the world of dreams that Rand would need to use the properties of the world of dreams to seal the boar, something that we know that he did not do. The theory states that the closer that you get to Sheol Ghul, the more merged reality and the world of dreams become, and that the world of dreams and its properties would be vital to winning the last battle. The last part of the theory is that the nature of the Dark One's power is in the world of dreams, and that the true power is really just an embodiment of the ability to alter and manipulate the properties of the world of dreams. He supports this by saying that this is why the Dark One has control over death, that he can place souls in a new body within the world of dreams, something that is said to only be possible at Sheogul in the Pit of Doom. So what's wrong with this theory? Well, there's a few holes in it based on what we learned in A Memory of Light. Given that the theory was written prior to A Memory of Light's release, it's really not the fault of the author as he didn't have all the details, but nonetheless, let's jump into a few areas that we know are false. For one, he stated that Ran will need to seal the boar using the world of dreams. He clearly doesn't will the, the prison on the Dark One shut, as the theory suggests, but rather uses the Dark One's own essence in the true power, along with the two sides of the one power, to remake the Dark One's prison and repair the boar. We also know that the Dark One's power is not just simply from the world of dreams, but that he's an infinite being outside of the pattern. The true power is his essence and not simply a derivative of the unseen world. We know this because we see the true power channeled far away from Sheogul, and the Forsaken are given varying levels of its use by the Dark One. They don't recognize its power as coming from the world of dreams, a place that they're all familiar with in some form. So I don't believe that that point holds up very well. So what do I think of the theory? Well, obviously some parts of it are incorrect, but on the whole, I really like this theory and I think most of it is plausible. I think it's fairly clear that Teleron Riyadh and reality are essentially the same the closer that you get to the boar. We learn this in A Memory of Light as Perrin can see and interact with Nynaeve and Moraine while they're in the Pit of Doom with Rand and he's in the Wolf Dream. We also know that those that were fighting nearer to Sheogul during the last battle had time passed far slower than the rest of the world, with Rand only spending a few hours in the Pit of Doom, while almost a month of fighting took place at Marilor and other areas in the last battle. This reflects what we know about time passing differently within the world of dreams. It also makes sense that the boar would be within the world of dreams due to the control the Dark One seems to have on the area around Sheogul. For instance, the sky in the Pit of Doom is unnatural. It's said to be unnatural clouds that don't exist when you're looking outside of it. The cave for the Pit of Doom can be manipulated to the Dark One's will, as it can shrink or grow based on what he wants. The blight is very unnatural and it's not present within the World of Dreams, implying that this is already a part of the World of Dreams. And accounting for all the weird creatures and deadly nature of the blight, they are projections of the Dark One's will upon the world through the World of Dreams. Because the pattern is very thin near to Shea Ghoul, his control grows. As I stated, neither Shea Ghoul, the Blight, or the Blasted Lands are present inside the World of Dreams. So it very much makes sense that these places are essentially already partially in the World of Dreams, hence why they don't have a reflection there. Sorry if that's really heady, but this is a big theory that I think is kind of cool to the mythos of the Wheel of Time. We also see during the last battle that the World of Dreams was far more affected than the Waking World. For instance, in Tyr in the World of Dreams at the end of A Memory of Light, the Stone of Tyr was almost entirely eroded away by the terrible winds swirling in the World of Dreams as the Dark One's influence spread across the world. But it was not the case in the Waking World. It also makes sense that the Dark One could access the dead souls that went to the World of Dreams and place them in a new body at the Pit of Doom. This would be the only place that his control would be strong enough, as he can't control the pattern, but he can control Teleron Riyad, which in turn could affect the pattern. For a theory written without all of the information, this was an extremely well put together theory and I like it a lot. I think it explains a lot of the weird properties about the boar and explains a bit about how the Dark One affected the world. What do you guys think of this theory? Are there any holes in it that I missed? Do you think the Great Lord of the Dark is correct? 
please let me know in the comments below. I'll also have the theory itself linked in below if you want to read through it yourself. And if you liked the video, please smash that like button and hit the subscribe button as well to be updated when I release new content. Also, go ahead and hit that bell icon next to it so you can get notifications. I also want to give a very special thank you and shout out to my newest top tier supporter over on Patreon. The Herc is my newest chosen over there, and I'll have a sponsored video from him coming up soon where he gets to pick the topic. If you want to support the channel and what I'm doing here, please take a look at my Patreon page and decide if you want to get involved. There are some cool perks to your support, and I appreciate all of you who are a part of our small community here. Hey guys, until next time, peace out. Think you're in the kitchen with a job of work to do My mistress up above, slipping on a rope of blue She prances down the staircase, a fancy oh so free Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?